Uh, this is the first uh, Sunday that I can say truly that I was just telling uh, Sister Nick a little early. I said, man, I said, Del Pierre and all three of the pastor's family, my mother-in-law, the pastor's father, and then uh, Pastor Miles lost someone close to him and his family. And uh, we just want to be in prayer for them as well and for their family as well as for my wife and her family. Are there any other announcements? Okay, if not, then we're going to transition to our offering time. Hey, Amen. There are a number of ways to give. You can give cash out. Uh, you can give uh, off, uh, offline, off online. Uh, it, you can give that way, or you can give the old-fashioned way. Just drop it off in the tide box. <laughs> Most of us that been around for a long time, we just usually just drop it off in the tide. Amen. Just a blessing to be here this morning. Blessing to see these little children this morning. Eh? They are blessed, and they are our future. They are our future. They started out in the church house, continue with them in the church house. That's how they began to grow and learn about Jesus. blessing to be in the Lord's house. I don't know about you, but man, after being out there with the wolves all weekend, ooh, 
would sure feel good being the house log where the sheep are. And you know, if any wolves do manage to get up in here, we pray to God to change them over to a sheep before they leave up out of here. Amen. It's just a blessing to be here before you once again. Uh, again, keep Pastor Paul and Pastor Miles and uh, myself up in prayer because of the loss that we suffered in our families. Uh, my mother-in-law passed last Sunday on my birthday, and uh, I was just happy to just be there with her for the last few months because when my mother passed, she was like a second mother. Uh, she took a step right in. Every time she'd see me, she'd always say, come here, boy, give mama a hug and some sugar. So I enjoyed that. I enjoyed those moments with her. So she's having a good time right now. If she could, she wouldn't come back. She's where we're all trying to go. I just tell them, just save me a seat. Save me a seat, because one day I'm going to be there. One day we're all going to be there. There's no if, ands, or getting around in it. We all have a destination with death one day. But it's how we leave here that counts. Do we leave in Jesus or do we leave in sin and in the world? We want to leave in Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I want to talk to you this morning. Uh, sometimes I laugh at some of the titles and messages God gave me. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> and when he gave it us from here, I started, I said, Lord, you sure you want me to say that? <laughs> he said, yeah. So that, uh, we're going to uh, talk this morning. And the title that he gave me was, what in hell do you want? What in hell do you want when heaven has all that you need? We're going to look at some qualifications. Uh, first, we'll go to Luke chapter 4. And we'll be reading from verse uh, 1 to verse 13. When you have it, say amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to be reading. Uh, I'm reading out of, New King, out of the King James Version. And it reads, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. First of all, before I go any further, you know what it said. Who kept company with Jesus? It said that the Holy Spirit Kept company with Jesus. He was full of it. In other words, Jesus was trying to tell us, don't leave home without it. You need the Holy Spirit everywhere you go. Don't think that the enemy is not waiting to catch you slipping and catch you when you don't have what you're supposed to have with you. He knows. <laughs> He's, ah, oh, fine, I got it. Let me move in while I got the chance. But when you're safe to net and your parachute God is Jesus and the Holy Spirit, he knows he's in for the fight of his life. In fact, about it, sometime he'll throw in a towel before he even begin, because he knows he's fighting a losing battle. He goes on to say here, he said, Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days did he eat, he, did he eat nothing. When, and when... They were at, were at end. He afterwards hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thy be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, 
for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt, not, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pedestal of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in thy, their hand they shall bear thee up. Least at any time thou shall dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him a season. Now you notice the last part said he departed from him a season. Not for good. Now, the devil found not one thing. He meant more than his match. He better be glad it wasn't Jesus that uh, fought with him and kicked him out of heaven. He wouldn't still be around. But God saw fit and said, you know what? He's not even worthy of me or Jesus or the Holy Spirit putting my hands on him. Michael, take care of my light work. And kicked him on out. If he wasn't a match for Michael, how's he going to be a match for Jesus? And then another the thing that it tells here, the reason why we went here, because we want to read the qualifications. Why? And what makes heaven has all that you need? Here Jesus gives the greatest example of all when he didn't fall in for the temptation. I guess the devil thought after 40 days, yeah, I got him now. Man, I know he hungry. I know he thirsty. I caught him at his weakest spot. <laughs> he didn't know that Jesus had a reserve pack, and that reserve pack was the Holy Spirit. He didn't need food like we need. His food is his word. His food is his father. His food is the Holy Spirit. That's what kept him going. Now, I don't know about you and me. When we fast, in and at the time, we hungry when we come. We're looking for some food. But Jesus already had his food. His food was the word. That's why he told Satan, he said, let me tell you something. He said, uh-uh. He said, man, don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Are we living today by the word that comes out of God's mouth, or are we living by food alone? Oh, I know some greedy people in this world, Brother Johnny. They, they can't wait to get to the food plate. Oh, man, what time is it? Oh, I got five minutes. Four time me to go get something to eat. Oh, man, here up five minutes. Break time. Some of them got to eat every break. Some of them got to eat when the break, there ain't no break. <laughs> they eat all the way home. They just eat, eat, eat. But Jesus showed them and gave them the secret, and he told them, hey, uh-uh. I don't live by food, but I live by my word. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And you know the biggest thing of it is that it shows us just how big of a fool Satan was. You were so foolish, you tried to offer something to Jesus that already belonged to him. Everything that he had, every kingdom that he see, Jesus had a hand in making that. He made that. You didn't make it, devil. You got that little authority when you got kicked down here. But at any time, your little privilege can be revoked. And you know, thank God that he hasn't revoked some of our privileges that have not come to the Lord yet. He's constantly being patient with a lot of people. So that in the end, they won't be able to say, well, Lord, when did I have a chance to come to know you? He'll show it to them. It's going to be live, and it's not going to be memorized. He got a big scream up there. He's going to show you everything it is about your life. We went here to show why Jesus is so much greater 
and why he is the way to heaven, to everything that you need. Now, if you will, turn with me to Psalms 23. Amen. Brother Chris didn't know a while ago when he was up and he read Psalm 20. He didn't know that was part of this message. I just started laughing. Sometimes God has a way of reassuring you. He said, hey, here you go. He said, I know you would ask it last minute. Lord, you sure you want me to go there? God has a sense of humor, but I love it. We serve a powerful and a loving God. So anyone that does go to hell, they can't say that God didn't give them every chance. Because he's given all of us every chance. This is the reason why after the fourth chapter of Luke, we see who were more than qualified to take us to heaven. Psalms 23, it starts off at that verse 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. Don't you want a shepherd, somebody that's going to lead you through green pastures? Green pastures mean refreshing places, places where you can be refreshed. All green. We're not talking about the color of money green. We, everybody loves that, <laughs> the color of money. What well, we're talking about, some green pastures. That means the pastor's on your way to heaven. It's him leading you. The word said it precious. In the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his loved ones. That means God don't have any problem coming to get you. If you find some people have found so much favor with God, I believe sometimes God tells them, say, hey, I got this one here. I'm going to bring him home. Do you know you can find favor with God every time you do God's will? Every time you share God's word with somebody and you break the enemy's back and steal another out of his camp, somebody come to Jesus that's another notch in God's belt. And guess what? It takes a notch out of the enemy's belt. Oh, he loves to win, but he don't like to come up against Jesus. He already knew from Luke 4 what it meant to come up against Jesus. He couldn't get a win no kind of way. He tried everything. Tried to tempt him with food. And also he admitted one thing when he told him, said the angel will, will bury you up. He admitted a part of it. He said he would, the part that he admitted was that it would guard you in all your ways. That means not some ways, but all ways. Whatever is hindering you, whatever the enemy might think, well, let me go around the corner and behind him, it's a weak spot back there. No, let me go on the side. That's covered back there. Let me go on the side, on the right side. No, he got that covered. Let me go on the left. Oh, Jesus is over there, but maybe I can sneak in on this clothes. Man, Jesus is under his pants leg. He can't get in no kind of way. Because Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father are guarding you in all your ways. And I don't know about you, but I need him to guard me each and every day. Sometime I'm driving, and this rascal will bring some of the most foulish thoughts to mind. Just come out of nowhere. And you're talking about somebody hating him with a passion. I hate him with a passion. And he knows it. But that don't stop him from trying his tricks. Well, let me try this here. I didn't get him then. And guess what? He's good at rewarming the same old soup. He'll bring it back in another package, just a different package. He'll fix it up a little better. Oh, he didn't go for that small package. Maybe if I bring a, a big package with a big bow on it and put this little package that I was trying to get him with on the inside, I can get him to open it up. But you know what? The word said that God will guard you in all your way. God will let you know to open that package. There ain't nothing in there good for you. Don't open that package. And the one thing that he hates, he hates when God is guarding us. He hates when God is talking to us. He can hear. Man, Jesus is talking to him, telling him, don't do this. Man, if it wasn't for Jesus, I had him. I could have got him. 
He don't like to lose. What in hell do you want when heaven has all that you need? He goes on here to say in verse 3, it says, He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You heard it from the Lord's mouth. He said, if you with him, he'll not only come get you, he'll guide you. And he said, you'll dwell in his house forevermore. And guess what? We're going to find out that when we get to his house, he's going to have a new house for us. He's going to make old things become new. Let me tell you something that he said in Psalms 43, Psalm 46 and 1. He said this. He said, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. And some verse read in times of need. What does that tell you? It tells me the same thing we just got through saying. God is always on God for his children. He is a very, very present help in our times of need. He'll be there when nobody else will be there. When mama, daddy, brother, sister, wife, or anybody that's close won't be there and turn their back, he'll be there. He is your very present help, and he's all that you need. I tell you, the words say, what in hell do you want when heaven has all that you need? I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven. And I know you do too. Nobody wants to go to hell. The word tells me that it's a place of weeping and gashing and gnashing of teeth. A place of constant torment and uncomfortable. Ask the man that wanted to trade places with Lazarus. He asked Father, he said, let Lazarus come and dip his finger in this bowl of water, just cool my parched tongue. Too late. <laughs> you should have did what was right when you had the chance. Now Lazarus is laying in comfort and of arms of Father Abraham, in the arms of Jesus. Let me tell you something. If you don't get it right in this world, it's too late to try to get it right on the other side. Get it right here and now. And guess what? The enemy is not telling anybody. One day, it says in Isaiah that God is going to put him before all of the kings of the world and before everybody so that they can see who it is that's been deceived. It also said, though, that he deceived and called to do his will, that they're going to look at him and they're going to say, are you the one that caused me to waver? Are you the one that caused me to kill somebody for nothing, to go on a killing spree? They're going to have eternity to whoop his mind. They're going to have eternity to put the boot to him. Whatever they want to do, but they're going to be uncomfortable themselves. So the enemy say, I ain't worried about that because while I'm on flame, you're going to be in flames too. What in hell do you want when heaven has all that you need? Turn with me, if you will, to Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to start at verse 10. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And it says, And the devil that deceived them 
was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And that book of life, that's just Jesus' book. That's his personal book. Because guess what? How do we know that? You're going to stand before him and give an account. You, me, and give an account of everything that we've did from the time that we come up. And there ain't going to be no need of somebody trying to lie. He said a lie not going to stand in ter- Terry in his presence. Because guess what? He's going to show it to you. You ain't going to be able to say, I didn't do that, Lord. He said, ain't that you right there? Snatching that woman's purse. Ain't that you right there? Shooting somebody for nothing just because you couldn't stand them. Ain't that you right there hating that person in your heart and wouldn't have forgiveness when they ask you to forgive them? He's going to show it out. They're going to be speech. They ain't going to be able to say a word. It goes on to say and say, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up the dead were delivered up the dead which were in them. They and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now turn, go with me to uh, chapter 21, verse 1 through 5. And it reads, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, and he has set down, and he has set up on the throne, said, and he who set up on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And the Lord have a blessed on a reading word. And let me just say this that God is a good God. You just heard from his word. His word, not mine. But he said, I make all things new. Meaning even as holy as the heaven is now that God is in. God said, I'm going to do away with heaven and make a better heaven. I'm going to make a better earth. And I'm going to bring my kingdom down. And I'm going to dwell with man. And men will dwell with me. Don't you know it will be a blessing every day to be able to walk with Jesus, to be able to talk with the Holy Spirit, to be able to see God for who he really is? How would it be if God just took you by your hand and said, come on, we're going for a walk in heaven. 
We're going down here and see the fresh water, see the good fish that I have swimming. We're going down here and just have a good time. And guess what? Jesus is preaching today. Wouldn't you like to hear a sermon from Jesus when he preached today? Wouldn't you like to hear the Holy Spirit preach today? But most of all, wouldn't you like to hear God preach his own word? Wouldn't you like to hear some of the old prophets like Daniel bring God's word? Uh, wouldn't you like to be there in heaven? It'll be a party that won't never stop because God is all in all. He's all that we need. I believe I have something else to show you if Sister Nika was able to pull it up, that heaven's grocery store. This is what you are in store for. Here it is. This is what it said that you're in store for when you go to heaven. It said, I was walking down life's highway a long, long time ago. One day I saw a sign that read, Heaven's Grocery Store. As I got a little closer, the door opened wide. And you know Jesus don't open no door wide for no sinner. He opened his door wide for those of us that belong to him. The door opened wide, and I found myself standing inside. I saw a host of angels. They were standing everywhere. One handed me a basket and said, my child, shop with care. Everything a human needed was in that grocery store. And if you couldn't carry it all, you could come back. Like you could come back the next day for more. First, I got some patience. Love was in the same row. F further down was understanding. You need that everywhere you go. I got a box or two of wisdom. I got a bag or two of faith. I just couldn't miss the Holy Ghost, for it was all over the place. I stopped to get some strength and courage. You helped me to run the race. By then, my basket was getting full, but I remember I needed some grace. I didn't forget salvation, for, sal for salvation was free, so I tried to get enough of that to save both you and me. Then I started up to the counter to pay my grocery bill. For I thought I had everything to do to do the master's will. As I went up to the aisle, I saw prayer, and I just had to put that in. For I knew when I stepped outside, I would run into sin. Peace and joy were, plenty, were peaceful, plentiful, they were lost, they were last on the shelf. Psalms and praise were hanging near, so I just helped myself. Then I said to the angel, now how much do I owe? He smiled again and said, my child, Jesus paid your bill a long, long time ago. Don't you know the day that we said, I do to Jesus, the day that we claimed him as Lord and Savior, he paid our bill. He paid our bill at Capitol when he got on that cross. And everyone that looks up to that cross, everyone that named the name of Jesus, your bill has been paid. You're going to be able to go to heaven's grocery store. I don't know if you're going to have a big enough grocery basket to get all them goodies up there. Well, one thing about it, you will have to go to Best for Less, Walmart, or anywhere else. Jesus got all you need right there in heaven's grocery store. We know that God is a good God, and we're so thankful today. Is there anyone here that might need Jesus today? If you need Jesus, 
He's here for you today. One thing about it, even when we forget him, he don't forget us. When you feel that warm, constant feeling come over you, that's him. When you feel an evil presence, that's not him. You know that's the enemy. We're so thankful today. If there's one here that needs Jesus, he's here today. Amen. We thank God for the message that he gave this morning. We're going to transition over to our communion this